What's up guys, it's Dame Cody here and welcome back to another video. And cut the inspirational music. Let's get some stuff done. What's up, guys? It's Name Coyote here. And a couple years back, I tried to be Pikmin 3 without killing an enemy. And today, we're doing it again, except this time in the brand new Pikmin 4. But you need to kill enemies to beat Pikmin 4. Well, do you? Yes. Literally every Pikmin game with an asterisk next to Pikmin 2 requires you to kill enemies to beat the game. But that's not gonna stop me from trying my best to be a pacifist in Pikmin 4. So let's hear the rules! Number one, we cannot kill any enemy that is not strictly required to beat the game. Beating the game in this case means reaching the credits, since we can't collect every treasure or castaway without killing loads of enemies. And luckily, in this game, it's super easy to tell if we've killed an enemy because there's a running counter in the Piclopedia. So, for example, I can hit this iridescent flint beetle until it runs away in a panic, but it doesn't count as a kill because the Piclopedia doesn't say it does. Number two, I'm not gonna kill the red leafling or moss during Dandori battles or anything else, obviously. Number three, some people say a true pacifist run requires us not to kill Pikmin either. If you believe that, maybe just don't. Yeah, I don't follow that rule because I suck and also I think it's stupid. Like, if I kill your friend and you're standing there, is it your fault? No. Even if you grabbed your friend to use as a shield or a weapon, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. That being said, at one point in time or another, we will have to break these rules to progress with the story, so make sure you leave your predictions down in the comments below. How many enemies will we have to kill? No cheating! Actually, you know what? Cheating's allowed. Just, just this one time. Anyway, with the rules out of the way, let's get started. Time for the tutorial. The game starts off with a pretty decent section where we play as Olimar, and Olimar is a ruthless murderer. So we have to kill the rat thing. It doesn't feel right starting off the run this way. Add one to the kill counter, Olimar, you son of a gun. Luckily, we don't see Olimar ever again because he dies. So, I make my character find Ochi sitting in timeout, and together, we rescue Colin. Hello, Ninka. Oh, Davis, I'd love to introduce you, but you're not in this video. You're so dumb, Ninka Odi, I already said hello. <sighs> right. Okay. Me, Colin, and Ochi all make our way down this cave, and look, there's Captain Shepard and some required kills. One, two, three, and the fun part about these guys is that all of the blood can be literally on our hands. We didn't even need Pikmin to quadruple the kill counter. Great. But that Shepard rescued, and after escaping the cave, we get a nice peaceful rest of the day finding our first Pikmin, collecting the Game Boy, and not killing any more enemies. So that's the end of day one, and already four kills on the board. Since we won't be able to use enemy corpses as a source of Pikmin for the run, I stock up in the hub before we start day two, and today we're headed to the Sun Speckled Terrace. Who's the bitch? Thankfully, it starts off a little bit more peaceful, just having to distract some dwarf bull boars while we do some stuff under their noses. We reach the first cave of the game, the Last Frost Cavern, and that's the last time our kill counter will ever be four, because we have to kill this snowy blowhog to obtain Ice Pikmin. Or so you thought. We can actually just ignore these wild Pikmin and move over to these pots right here, with five Ice Pikmin hiding inside. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Anybody say anything there? We grab ourselves a castaway, a flower, bowl, both treasures, and boom! Ochi? Ochi? What are you doing? Ochi? Ochi? Thought we were, thought we were in trouble there. <laughs> Boom! That's a cave, 100%ed, without any kills, and now we have Russ, and you thought I couldn't do it. Exiting the cave, we make our way to the second landing site, and oh no. Oh no. Nearly every landing site in this game is guarded by some amount of enemies. So, we're gonna have some long trips back to base. Like some... Long trips. To nourish that wound, I snake myself all the way around to our next cave, the Crackling Cauldron. Our one and only strategy for carrying items is let the Pikmin die and keep going. Anyway, 
Yellow Pikmin, which will be just as useless in this run as they always have been. None of the enemies really get in the way besides this sheer wig here, which is, I mean, it doesn't really get in the way, if I had to have a unique way of saying it. The enemies just aren't fast enough, and hopefully that's a theme we'll see throughout the run. And sub-level 2 has even less enemies, aside from this Scorch Cake, which just prevents us from making a base like 3 centimeters away from our starting base anyway. Super easy! And done. 100% complete with no kills. Now with Yellow Pikmin, we get access to some new areas, and mark my words, this will probably be the last time Yellow Pikmin are required for this Sometimes entire video. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. But it's time to start collecting stuff, and with a quick time trial all the way up across the map, I determine it's generally a pretty safe path home, despite the length of the trip. So I gather up a few treasures and another bulb without too much excitement. Day three and Ochi is big, which means he can be upgraded. Chomp and Rush aren't gonna be all that helpful for obvious reasons, so I go ahead and upgrade Buff until Ochi can now carry 20 units. Also, we can ride him like a cow. Though it's a safe path, I go ahead and build this bridge anyway and finish up grabbing some treasures I can now get by jumping. Cave number one of the day, the Hectic Hollows. Ochi can't swim yet. Just thought I'd say that. Yeah. Neither can the Pikmin. It doesn't it doesn't look like. It's time to introduce a tactic we'll be using quite a lot through the run here. This is called the Roundhouse. Running in a circle to distract enemies that would otherwise eat our 9 to 5 Pikmin. We can't get these wild Pikmin off the enemies as was before with the Blowhog, but the rest of the sublevel goes pretty smoothly. And no. No, I am not a big fan of this pig. But considering that's the only enemy on sub level 2, that's another cave, 100%ed. Cave number 2 of the day, the Industrial Maze. This cave has absolutely no enemies, it's just normal sucking at puzzles. Well, except for the Honey Wisp, but they of course are harmless, so there's no need to... I think I forgot what the point of the run may have been here. <laughs> I don't... I don't know. It doesn't count as a kill on the Picklepedia, so... Dingo acquired! 100% complete. We bust out the old roundhouse once again to distract these shear grubs while I pick and build the bridge in the next area, a process which took two straight minutes. Heading upward and onward, we reach cave number three of the day, the Equiferous Summit, which has no enemies at all, so that's another 100% on the board. And through the cave, we reach an uninhabited landing site, which I gladly claim. We can't defeat the porcupine, but there's a bit of treasure we can get, including the fire-breathing feast, this time without having to add a kill to the counter. And the roundhouse does the trick. Then, in a moment of weakness, I overestimate the amount of time I have left in the day and send these Pikmin off in an attempt to collect the blue onion, only to instantly regret it and spend the rest of the day chasing after them. So we lose a few ice, but we've now collected enough sparkling to head to the next area. Uh, also Dingo is useless and says nothing helpful. I get the headlamp, what a waste, and Ochi learns super buff. Day four and we're off to the blossoming Arcadia and we've got two prime objectives. First, we need to get enough sparkling to head to the next area. Two, we need to fight the red leafling and rescue his castaway. Why? Because Bernard, the pilot, is the third leafling you rescue from these specific battles, and it's important we don't rescue any other leafling because we need to do as few night missions as possible, and you'll find out why, though you're smart, you can take a guess, no cheating. Nah, I'm just kidding, of course you can cheat. Bridge, roundhouse, new landing site, and shoot, trial run? Did I, did I skip the red leafing battle in the Sunspeckled Terrace? I guess, I guess I did. Yeah. Well, the rules for Dandori are the same for the actual run, so let's be careful not to kill anything. And now might be a good time to mention, we're not gonna have time to show the full Dandori battles. But I'll definitely make a compilation of my successful attempts to post for those of you who want to see. My failed attempts, though, will remain lurking somewhere marked with the epitaph. Join. Obviously, we win first try and golf ball. This was, uh, not worth it, but... Um, well... The Creeping Chrysanthemum, as it's called, is way too slow to catch any Pikmin building this climbing wall. And from there, it's a straight shot. It's a straight shot. The ring pop was hard to get, okay? Does it bother you that I had to include the whole footage so you could suffer as much as I did? From there, it's a straight shot to the Kingdom of Beasts, and we don't even have enough reds to fill the caves, so... Yellows it is! Woohoo! 
first sub-level, and it's pretty easy to grab all the treasures from under the enemy's noses. And then we get to the second sub-level with Rock, Thickman, Larry, Dwayne. Is that you guys? No? No, okay, they're too busy doing no damage to Bulwarps to notice us. For that rocks, the next sub-level is impossible to reach, but it wouldn't matter anyway because it's a boss fight, which we obviously couldn't do. So we leave the longest cave in the main story with two treasures and two Pikmin gained. Score. On our way to the next cave, we grab this head, and here we go, Secluded Courtyard. The first sub-level has no enemies except these wall poles, which just like the dwarf orange bulbers from the last cave, are preventing us from grabbing these blue Pikmin. But a rather intellectual freezing of the ice frees the blue Pikmin from their pointless squander, and we welcome them to the squad. Not Larry, but blue. Then there's harmless skitter leaves, but thankfully the Pikmin cooperate and don't attempt to kill any of them. Please just enjoy this because I didn't. Nevertheless, that's all the treasures here, so on to the next sublevel where we meet the Dweevils! I won't lie to you guys, this run has some of the most infuriating challenges that I have ever had to go through in life. I get lulled into this false sense of security by how easily the Kiwi is to grab, but then this bell is guarded by two Dweevils that just pass this jingly little freak around. And then there's a castaway deeper in the cave, and you think, surely it can't be that hard, and you get past the first weevil after like two minutes, and somehow six more just spawn in! And, th and these guys still have the bell, because the bell's impossible to get, but once you get past them, there's another one?! So sure, let's just, let's just get the bell instead, because this demon is gonna steal it, and cost me another hour of my life if I get the castaway first! And then like, what is this?! Mushroom Gorge?! Oh, yeah. We got Frank, though. That's everything on sub-level 2 collected, and there's simply ooey gooeys on sub-level 3, and honestly, I can't explain how I got this flarlick off these skitter leaves, but that's three sub-levels in a row. I'm sorry, hold on. Can we just, let's clap for that for a second. Look at that. Nice! That's three sub-levels in a row, 100% without killing an enemy, and all good things must come to an end, of course, in the form of... Normally I'd say a joke to poke fun at this enemy's design, but I'm not going to. Without the Fulix treasures, that's the end of the cave, but hey, we did a pretty good job. And that's the end of the day. Day five, and for some reason, we're back in the sun-speckled terrace. It's gonna be a long and perilous trail for these Pikmin to build this bridge, but it's something we have to do. Brown has the shear grubs and the bulborb has moved out of the way for the return trip, so boom, a job well done and only four Pikmin lost. That clears the way for the battle in a box. Once again, I can't be caught showing this whole Dandori, so here's some random stuff. <laughs> With the leafling defeated, we send the castaway back to base, and it's about time we get the blue onion. Oh, okay, maybe not. It's about time we get the yellow onion. Seriously, how did we not have this already? I do a little bit more treasure collecting, but there's not much left to do in this area, so that's the day. Oh, 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 oh. Even though we've got enough sparkling to head to the next area, day six, and we're back in the blossoming Arcadia for... I don't know, why did I come back? There's gonna be a lot of exploring and constructing today, which is not fun to watch, so while we're collecting this cantaloupe, I thought I'd mention a few days ago, not too long, we reached 10,000 subscribers on the channel. This is a milestone I never could have dreamed of reaching when I started this channel three years ago, and honestly, thank you all so much. 99% of you are, are people I've never met before, and I, you just love my videos, and that is such a crazy thought to me. I've had a blast so far on YouTube, and I can't wait to make the announcement when we've hit 10,192 subscribers in, in a few years. So, once again, thank you all so much. Tennis ball. And you know what time it is. Do I hear a preliminary version of a piece of writing? Because welcome to the Drafty Gallery. Baby Snagrits are barely a hindrance to collecting all the treasure on sub-level 1, but disaster strikes on sub-level 2. Yeah. Oh, that does not look pretty, does it? Gonna, gonna have to be a rewind. Oh, just yellows? No. 
No, wait, we can probably keep going. Without the troubles of the lesser pigment types, we can pretty easily collect everything on this floor too, but sub-level three is a different story. Filling this bridge does nothing to connect our ship with the trove of treasures only accessible from this geyser, meaning without this Jousmite's landing site, we're not collecting anything but raw materials here. Given the next floor is a boss floor anyway, there's no use wasting the time or resources to build the bridge, so let's get out of here. We've still got time left in the day, so let's hit another cave! The sightless passage is ugly and terrible, and I spend more time scouting than I do playing the game. Why is this water dump camping my base? Honestly, delete this cave. Day 7, with enough ice pikmin wounds, we can nab the blue onion! Day 8, please keep your arms and stuff inside the research pod as we descend on the serene shores. Follow me as we make our way to this sand pile and unlock a landing site. And please enjoy your stay at the Seafloor Resort. <laughs> On the outside, this cave looks like a simple collection of easily accessible treasures. But beneath the mask of fish and fire, a sinister truth lies somewhere underneath. The Seafloor Resort is one of those places you sit and think, Surely nothing terrible will happen here. You'd be wrong. Our trials start early, when traditional cheese tactics don't work on obtaining this floor like, meaning we have to go to the intended method of building the faucet. Every corner, I swear, is a new demonic puzzle to unpack. Sublevel 2 doesn't look much better, with a castaway stuck, unobtainable in a jelly float. There are also punk little freakazoid devils with ducks that take a solid five minutes to obtain. <laughs> Ah! Sub-level three. <clears throat> oh, wait. We get everything on sub-level three. And sub-level four, we can't defeat the Master Hop, so we can't get any castaways in this whole cave. Ah! But, wait a second. No, that doesn't work. But wait a second. We're not losing to this cave after this whole freak show. Bring in the heavy artillery. Oh shoot. But wait a second! Yeah! That's the cave conquer! That's Yanni rescued! I take back everything I've ever said about yellow Pikmin! Triple S tier Pikmin type! Better than Pikmin 3 whites! Yeah! With the Seafloor Resort completed, we now have the proper 7,000 sparkling funds, meaning we have one sole objective for the rest of the day. So please enjoy the Ochi Waddle to our next Andori battle. It's going great, and I mean, it's going great. <sighs> but we have to restart. So it's going slightly less great now, but we're still getting the win on this one. Moai. Now that Yanni is here, it's time for the most intense part of the run. Welcome to Night Missions, where the goal is to kill the most enemies possible. For those of you just checking in, that is the exact opposite goal of the pacifist run. Alright, alright, so I exaggerated a little bit. The goal here is to defend the Luminol for just long enough to give us the antidote for our leafing friends, which we need to do three times if we're gonna cure Bernard from the Dandori castle that we just rescued. So, let's find a way to run out that clock. Strategy number one is activating the trick nozzles and running in circles around the baby bulwarks. And boy, is it a primitive strategy, but oh my, does it almost work? No. Strategy two, let's buy some items. Ice bombs will allow us to stall enemies, and bridge will allow us to stall enemies, and live commentary only accessible to channel members will allow us to see... Eight, seven, what the heck? Ice blast! Ah! There are so many! Stop it! Stop! Do we have any more ice blasts? Ice blasts! Oh, three! Two! Whoa! Tell me we made it! Tell me we made it! Two! One! 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 Go! Is that it? Whoa! That it works! Dash revived, no enemies killed. Wow, that was surprisingly easy. I hope it doesn't get worse. And if you didn't like how I sped through that, now might be a good time to mention 
All of the footage from this run has already been uploaded and posted for weeks to my YouTube members to watch, as well as several more incredible and interesting videos, including a live commentary of my first pacifist night mission that we just finished. So check it out if that sounds like something you're interested in. It's only 99 cents a month, and real quick, shout out to all of my current channel members. You guys are so great. Look at them. Mm, they're so beautiful. But uh-oh, here's a problem. Where are the other night missions? No matter how much I grill Colin, he doesn't want to give me the hard truth. In order to unlock the rest of the night missions, for some strange, demented reason, we need to unlock the second landing site in the Sun Speckled Terrace. Which means, as reverently as we can, we must whisk this blowhog off to the next life. Day 12, and there it is, night two. First, we need to find out where the enemies are gonna come from. This level has only six individual bull borbs, meaning it should be pretty easy to distract them all if we plan our attack properly. Ice bombs are still, of course, going to be a valuable asset, but ideally, we'll need as few as possible. Uh, Ochi dies. Attempt two. Bull Borb 1 is easy to distract, but the bridge boy here makes it hard to defend from two angles. Once they're attacking the Luminol, it's Basically a lost cause, just way too overwhelming. Attempt 3. It's about time I realized these guys are challenged to eat a single Pikmin, so that could keep them busy for a while. Uh, Ochi dies. Our first unleash of a lightning bolt, though, proves pretty nice, and we make it to Countdown. Progress is progress. Attempt 4. Um, let's just skip Attempt 4. Attempt 5. If we get Decor Pikmin on them as early as possible, it puts more distance between them and a potential disaster, though we do still have to make sure they don't get killed. Made it to Countdown again, but a loss is a loss, so let's get in the game here! Uh, also, Ochi dies. Attempt 6. Attempt 7, it's time to try something new. If I set up a network of Blow Pikmin running back and forth, it'll distract the Bull Wars while not putting any of them in harm's way whatsoever. So let's draw some guys on Star Bits to waste a little time. All we need is an extra 6 seconds of distraction, and I really think I'll just show you how well this worked because wow, this is astounding. A few lightnings and ice bombs later, nice try. Buddy. Success and only seven attempts to get it. That's two out of three dudes cured, so let's not waste any time getting to our final night mission. For the first time, we've got some options here now that we've arbitrarily unlocked them. The Fragrant Ravine has low HP skitter leaves, so let's roll that one out. The Blossoming Dunes has sheer wigs that are way too easy to accidentally kill, and that leaves us with the Misshapen Pond with a million little baby bulb orbs. Uh oh. So I have to ditch night missions and rescue this boat instead. Attempt one, the good thing about this area is that there's two luminols which will make it, so this is the last night mission we ever need to do. The bad thing, there's two luminols. Let's start by trying out the same crisscross starboard pathways we used on the bull wars. It should also be a priority to destroy these holes right away to prevent too many babies from spawning in. Let's see what happens when I kill this joust mine. Okay, yeah, what? Well, what? Attempt two. Attempt three. I have found a spot to stand where lightning can freeze all the enemies at once. Glorious. Attempt fo- Wait, no, back to attempt three. I literally just do that for a whole minute. Are you serious? Wow, how many lightnings did I have? Well, there you go. Glow sap acquired and night missions done. What? Uh... Guys, upon further research, and contrary to my initial belief, I did not kill a single baby bulborb. I also didn't kill a joust mite or a pig, the only other enemies from this level. That leaves the only conclusion to be, the holes were counted as defeated enemies by the night mission counter, which, although it gave us a scare per the rules I established, we need not update the kill counter as they aren't featured in the Piclopedia and so are not actually a threat to the pacifist run. The reason I give this explanation is because there is no way to redo days in this game, so so we're stuck with it. Hopefully you're not upset because there's, I mean, there's no way to fix it. Sorry.
Time to revive Bernard and head to the final area. If you thought we'd be spending a lot of time here, you'd be wrong. Our only objective is to open the safe in the center and we barely need this area to do it. My first stop is to the playing card on this pegboard, easily maneuvered through the bed bugs. And our second and final stop is at the combination lock. I'm not gonna try to make this sound brilliant or anything. You guys see what I'm doing here. There's only so many codes available before we get the right one. So, into the final battle we go, and what a poetic ending to the run. We're here in a mode of the game I fast-forwarded through in my commentary using a type of Pikmin we were never able to rescue. Hey, Larry. Of course, I do have to restart at a point in time. It wouldn't be fair to not do so for our final trial. Seriously, go watch the compilation of these because they're fun and pretty tactical, but explaining them would be way too boring. I'll try to, I'll, I'll try to make it intense, though. Ooh, five seconds left. Four, three. Are we going to get back the pair that we don't need? Ooh, time's up. That's a win. Taking home the bacon. And Olimar's dead. I'm sure this won't hurt him then. It's a clear path back to the onion, so please just enjoy the trip with me. I won't go any long, thoughtful speech or anything as we near the end of the run, but around three years ago, at this time of year, I posted my first pacifist run of Pikmin 3, and oh my, have we come far since then. I want to thank you guys again for everything. There's going to be a few people clicking off right now, so let's do that thing again where we put as many references to um, country music from the 1990s in the comments to confuse everyone. And honestly, get your opinions on Tracy Bird. What do you guys think of this guy? Oh shoot, charitable efforts? Evie, because we already harvested the two-on-one glow sap mission, it's time to revive Olimar, hop on our ship, abandon anyone we've explicitly been asked to find, and head home. And that is the end of the game. Final kill count, only four. Hey, that's a lot lower than the last time. And actually, yeah, for technicality's sake, the count is seven. I prefer settling on an even five, but honestly... It's up to you guys to choose the ending you find most satisfying. You can see, however, that we received zero sparklium from Monsters in Caves, so maybe that's enough for you. I don't have a whole lot to say other than the 12 pages I already read off, so choose your ending. That'll be your job, and until then, my job is to end off the video. Next time, I think I got something a little bit out of the ordinary planned, but... That is all for now, so I thank y'all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Good job.